everyone. <laughs> I see someone sneaking around behind me. That's quite strange. So, as we said, welcome to Fredericksburg, Virginia. I'm A. Wesley Rush, and I'd like to bring you the DS-106 Radio Telethon. We have a series of interesting guests today that I will bring on one at a time, and eventually we'll get all people on the set and maybe have a bit of a sing-along. Who knows? So... What I'd like to do periodically is also mention some of the kind and generous people who have uh, donated to DS106 Radio today. Um, we can start with, and I'm going to only read their Twitter handle for sake of privacy, um, D. Kernahan from Bristol, UK. Thank you for, very much for your kind donation. Also, Easegill from Hamilton. Not the real one in Scotland, but the other one in New Zealand. There's also one in Hamilton, Ontario, I believe. Also, Stephen Hurley from Milton, Ontario, Canada. Thank you all very much for your donations. What I'd like to do now is bring on our first guest, and I will wrestle this microphone away from the stand. This first guest comes from Welland, Canada, Welland, Ontario. Um, it's a it's a state, you know, so it's well in Canada. Um, what we have, who we have here today is Julia Forsyth. Andy, 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 I'm a huge fan. Oh, it's... I came all the way, I came all the way to Canada to bring you and Timmy Boy some black socks. Yay! Oh, that's wonderful. Because I'm actually... <laughs> I, would I'm actu like, I would like you to keep these in the office for okay. those days, you know, every third day when Timmy wears white socks and right. he can wear these. Put these next to the Coca-Colas. I actually could have used those today because I, I had to switch to my blue socks. Oh, wrong. I don't know if you can wrong. Maybe wrong. tell. Wrong. No. Okay, there's, there's two pairs here. So one's for you and one's for Timmy Boy. Okay. These are special gifts just for you. Aren't you wonderful? Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. Um, so have, uh, take your seat there, get yourself comfortable, and we'll chat a little bit about... Uh, how you got involved with DS-106 and what you kind of think so far of our fundraising efforts, our uh, telethon itself, that sort of thing. You guys have brought it. You've been doing great. <sighs> I've just been watching and, and tweeting. We, we try to uh, make a difference. We try to share. We try to... I'm getting some directions <laughs> from off stage. I know I have no clue what that means. <laughs> they bring their A game. A game. Thank you, Julia, for the help. I, I'm I'm actually dyslexic, so it looked like as no, actually, would be as opposed to Timmy Boy's A game, which is the uh, absent game. Well, and 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 to be fair, Timmy Boy, um, we appreciate you letting us use all these facilities. I hope uh, the broadcast uh, looks as good as when Timmy does do the do the uh, the role of producer of this particular show. So again, shout outs to to Timmy Boy in uh, Richmond right now. Um, but so, Julia, um, your your thoughts of Fredericksburg, uh, maybe your thoughts of the crappy weather, um, your thoughts of just the, the general uh, jocularity and friendliness and warmth of, of the Fredericksburg people. Can you speak? Can you speak at all to that? It's a great city, actually. It's very lovely. Uh, it's pretty much anywhere town uh, North America. <laughs> sure. <laughs> It is, it I is, love the way that people just sort of crawl around yeah, the town. Like it's, a, it's a crawling kind of city. That's our that's our gaffer who just crawled across there. He needed he needed to tape a uh, a cable down I he on was the floor. A boom I don't know if we saw the kind of the refrigerator repairman look that went by there, but uh, um, again, he, we might see him a little bit later. Uh, I just um, wanted to be known that it only took eight and a half hours to get here, not twelve, like Jim Groom would said it would be. Yeah, there was a bit of a, a communication error there. I think uh, there there was someone named Andrew Rush who who said that it might be ten hours, and that of course got translated to twelve. That would be and wrong. So, so so we split the difference and we call it eight and a half. It was well worth <laughs> the drive to come down here just to yeah. even sit, be near the cuddle coach, noise professor. Uh -huh. I hope I get a cuddle coach badge now. Now that I'm on a chair. Absolutely. Yes. I hear badges are all the rage. Yeah. Well, I think they really reward work well done. Sure. We'll talk about that later. Yeah. We won't need to even worry Let's about it. Let's make a QR code see. for it. Oh, that's awesome. Okay. Um, I'm going to read a couple more names of people who have contributed. Um, and and funny, funnily enough, we have Timmy Boy from <gasps> Richmond, Virginia. Yay! One of our Timmy contributors. Um, also, Schweier from Rick Saskatoon. Yeah. Canada. Yeah, yeah. Saskatoon is Manitoba? Saskatchewan. Saskatchewan, sorry. Oh, I'm Roland, of course. Roland, Saskatchewan. 
the uh, it's the microphone nerves here that that made me make that that mistake here. Right. Uh, Brian Jack from Port Moody, yeah. British Columbia in Canada. Thank you very much, Brian. Woo, Port Moody. And also one percent yellow. Yeah. Who is on the move? Yeah, thank you up to for being on the move. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, Julie, again, thank you for the socks. Yes, I hope. Thank you for being here for all the various stocks that we've had. Um, and also, but this most importantly, this, this fundraising for DS106 Radio. My pleasure. Um, please, please stay seated okay. as we're going to bring on our next guest from the lovely city of Hartford, Connecticut. Um, we have the doctor, Dr. Garcia, Gina Garcia. Yeah. Welcome, Gina. Thank you, Thank you so much for being here. Have a have a seat. Um, I I can ask kind of the similar questions that I did to uh, Julia about what your uh, impressions are about um, the the great city of Fredericksburg and what you've experienced here. Is there a is there one particular memory that you have that uh, you associate with uh, your visit here? Probably spilling six ounces of red wine on Eniac last night while I was completely sober. I, yeah, I heard that about really that little disaster, out. and uh, what what is ENIAC's status at this point? He is hanging out in the basement of Casa Baba, hopefully drying out. Upside okay. down. Yeah, he's upside down right now. And I, I would just like to point out, dear listeners and watchers, that prior to that incident, Jim Groom had actually manhandled ENIAC twice. Yeah, there was some, like, unwarranted, unrequited... Fondling. Fondling, yeah. I'm gonna plugging in. Excuse me, Wally. Yeah, I'm waiting to be requited. <laughs> <laughs> he plugged it. this cable scenario yeah. into his backside. And did then he say, can I do that, please? He, did, he totally didn't. He just grabbed him and then stuck the cable in the back. <laughs> right? Well, I, you know, I think Eniac needed some wine after that. <laughs> <laughs> so do we do and we a, have and a cigarette? <laughs> <laughs> do we have hope for Eniac, Eniac at least? Is well, there some hope? And in all seriousness, folks, um, I turned it on this morning, and it literally popped and fizzed when I turned it on. And so the issue is, is that wine is a lot of liquid. Obviously, it's alcohol and water and whatever else it is, but it's also a lot of sugar. Mm. And sugar turns into syrup, right? Indeed. And so even the heat of the machine is going to juice up the syrup once the wine dries up. So it's, it's, it could be a problem. And we're really worried. but you have I, your, I am you concerned, have your... but I'm, sta I'm staying super cool. It's yeah. not getting in the way of any of the fun. It's because you're a pro, Gina. I try, you know, I try to bring my A game. Yeah. yeah. We're, we're hoping for the best. Yeah, apparently this is... <laughs> <laughs> this is the A game. Oh, as opposed to, as yeah. opposed to Red Light. Right. right on. Yes. So I'm happy to be here. Thanks for having me. It's up. It's up to you. I'll. Yeah. Go. Go. go All right. Go, you're here. Uh, from also from Henrico uh, School District in close to Richmond, Virginia, we have Tom Woodward. Come on yeah. in. Yeah. Say hello to the DS106 Radio crowd. Have a seat on the on the couch. I'm a big fan. I read all your stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Tom's also known as the Bionic Teacher, or associated with Bionic Teaching. Uh, welcome, Tom. Uh, you're you're familiar with with the DTLT digs here, so I don't necessarily need to ask you questions about what you think of Fredericksburg. I know you, I know how much you revile the place, um, you know, since Jim Groom is, uh, you know, a, a local inhabitant. So you try to stay away. I'm I'm sure. If it weren't for him, the place would be classier. Certainly. <laughs> we all feel that way, Tom. So glad that you could be here. Um, I want to read a couple more names of some uh, contributors. I'm going to skip a couple of these and, and bring them back later. Um, we have uh, Lou McGill from Scotland. Thank you, Lou, for your generous contribution. She's watching. Hey, Lou. Is she? That's great. Um, she said she's loving seeing the glorious we also, we also have L Noise Professor. Now, this says Folsom. It's not Folsom Prison, is it? No. Okay, just, just plain old Folsom. No. Plain old All right. Folsom. North of All right. Folsom Community College. Excellent. Right? No. Okay. Yeah. Is that right, Zach? Who? Zach. He's at Folsom okay. Community College. Isn't I don't think so. That's Los Rios. And we oh. also have uh, oh, B.R. Lamb. Is there a B.R. Lamb out there? Yeah. Uh, yeah. He, uh, yeah. he hails from the DS-106 Nation. By the way, nice. and we also have M. Branson's 
from Brooklyn. Yay! Yes. That yes. Yes. Not yes. Trivial. Thank you yes. all. <laughs> yeah, I've heard he's not trivial at all. No, um, he uh, again. We we thank him for uh, we thank them all for their generous donations. Um, I'd like to bring out another guest. Um, we have a person on here who actually did made a comp- contribution as well. He hails from Strawberry, Arizona, oh, yeah. and he goes by the moniker of Cog Dog. Cog Dog, could you come on out here, please? Hey! Want to get your suit dirty? Oh, I'm good. I'm good. I love the I love the hugs. Love the, just I love to crease the crease the uh, tux. Yeah, yeah. Um, that, well, that Alan, tux is sharp. Well, I dig it out every once in a while um, to show off. So, um, Alan, again, welcome. You've been here. You've been to Fredericksburg a couple of times. It's um, my second time in. Second time yeah. here. Um, previous time was Faculty Academy. Faculty Academy. Um, and you you brought your A game then. I hope so. Um, I we, mean, we, but that was 2007. A game has really risen. A lot that's true. Since it, no, that's you're true. like an A plus game. <laughs> At the time, I think you talked about uh, the uh, being there um, was your, your was your presentation. Yeah. And uh, you know, again, very enjoyable and always leave. I mean, the, the the thing that we love to have the people do is just kind of leave our faculty thinking about new things. Um, and you did that, I think, in spades. So we we appreciated your your presentation, and it was fun. Um, you, you guys, I mean, you inspired. We love we love having you here, and and we try to inspire each other if we can. Um, so there's Alan. Hey, hey, he's been Hi, looking away from the camera this time. So yeah, wave wave to your mom. Sure, mom and dad. Um, so um, I want to read a couple more names because we want to make sure that we get everybody on here. Okay, you good? All right. Um, so we have uh, Dragon, who Dragon. hails from Sound Lab. Yay. Thank you very much for your donations, Woo! Dragon. Thanks, Dragon. We have someone known as Hank Soda, who lives on the frontier. Shadowy nice. figure, a very shadowy figure. Thank you very much for your contribution. Um, and I'm going to leave a couple of those until the very end. Um, our next special guest. Um, it lives right here in the town of Fredericksburg. Wow. Um, very influential character in uh, the Division of Teaching and Learning Technologies. And his mind. Um, huh. He hails on Twitter by the strange moniker of at Jim Groom. Hmm. Um, I'd like to welcome Jim Groom. Groom. To the Groom. Show. Thank you very much for coming. <laughs> Have a seat. Thank you for having me, Andy. All right. It's great to be back on the cuddle couch, particularly next to Tom Woodford. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Timmy, get him out my eyes. Ex- <laughs> <laughs> and you know Timmy Boy wishes he was saying that, but it's me. I expect to hear about <laughs> <him>. <laughs> offspring coming a little later on. <laughs> <laughs> Don't, you can't punch me on TV. No punch. That's a rule. <laughs> Not in the face, at least. <laughs> All right, Jerry Springer says. <laughs> right, exactly. That's right. Yeah. All we could get no throwing so, chairs. So Jim, yes. um, Andy, give us a little bit of your, uh, I don't know, your your philosophy about life. Um, maybe uh, talk a little bit about DS one hundred and six radio, but uh, just kind of in general, what uh, what your feelings are about, mm-hmm. uh, you know, things, the state of education. I seldom wear underwear. Okay, <laughs> but when I do, it's usually something special. Uh huh. Okay. <laughs> I want to be the what big toe happen? of DTLT. I think that's been what mentioned. Happened? Jim, happened? Jim Groom, what happened? <laughs> yeah. Good. I mean, yes. and it, what's what, what's your beef, Jim? Do you have do you have like a beef? Do you have something that's like sticking in your craw? Like something angry with anything? Well, if if you need to get angry, I, I suppose an issue with something. Do you, do, you have, do you have any issues that, that sure. we need to kind of? I mean, the whole DS one hundred six radio. Like when I started DS one hundred six, it was pure, mm-hmm. and it was pure in my heart, mm-hmm. and there was no one who could kind of corrupt that purity, and then we had this idea for DS one hundred six radio. It seemed like a great idea. People did all sorts of things to kind of promote it. Some people got on it, some people didn't. People were actually investing their thoughts and their sounds and their love and their relationships into these airwaves, which I thought was social and connected. Mm -hmm. And then we found out, not but this morning, that what's happened on the S106 radio, everything has been archived in a dark web. That supposedly, Grant Potter is selling <gasps> yes no selling no. yes to authorities what? all over the world 
as a means, which is interesting because it's as a means so that they can take this rich archive of people who've talked on the radio for extended periods of times, like Gina. Um, <laughs> Julia, not so much because she only talks to herself and then jumps off if anyone goes <laughs> Alan and Shores. Andy once did a set once. Once. So his mother hung him on a hook once. <laughs> once. <laughs> Tom Woodward. I don't even know I was on this fucking couch. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and, you know, all of us did this, and then he put this in a data bank that supposedly these institutions of power can reconvene and re-kind of articulate as sounding like us. They're, they've actually consulted Tom Woodward on the technology because he's done this before. <laughs> he's helping them recut it to sound like it. So I could be saying something on a national broadcast... That I never meant to say. We've actually sold it to that Anya person. <laughs> Anya Khan. <laughs> 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 that's that's perfect. Yeah. And she's doing great with it. She's she presenting at the Smithsonian. <laughs> Only I knew. DIY radio. <laughs> DIY radio. <laughs> <laughs> and so we'll be saying things like, we hate the institution, we wish it would go away. <laughs> So, Dr. Oblivion, what just happened? Andy, I have no idea. Jim Groom, I would ask him this question if he were here. Jim Groom, what happened? And what would he would say to me? He would hem, he would haw, Tom Woodward did it, Gina did it, everyone else did it but him. He has a problem with coming to some sort of sense of accountability. Hmm. Was it blame other people for other things? Sure. He gets mad. He's a problem. He's what I like to refer to as problematic. That being said, it's good to be on TV again as Dr. Oblivion. It's, it's actually great seeing you. I know yeah. there's, a, there's a, a lot of fans out there of all ages, um, <laughs> from little six-year-old girls to, uh, you that's know, it. that's it. Well, <laughs> <laughs> Let's leave it at that. Sometimes it only takes one, Andy. That's true. And frankly, being in this space again, having gotten some freedom outside of that space, it's nice to take count of what's important in life. Sure. And DS-106 Radio is not one of the things that's really important in my life. <gasps> what's important in my life... <laughs> you didn't just say that. <laughs> Blasphemy. I don't know who she thinks she's talking to, because Jim Groom is gone off the radio. Am I right? Is he gone off the couch? He is gone. Who's on the couch right now? Dr. Oblivion. Dr. I Oblivion. thought everyone knew who you were. I thought, too. I've actually never seen him before. You've never wow. seen, oh, you've never watched any of the videos. You've never been on the same set as Dr. Oblivion. No. Yeah. Dr. Oblivion. Dr. Oblivion is not scary. Dr. Oblivion is a thinker. He's a deep thinker. He is. He's me. Mm. I don't know why I should refer to him the third person. <laughs> <laughs> well, some Strange. people talk like that. They they call themselves, you know, by their third yeah, in the third person. So yeah, she that's marketing. fine. I would think Dr. Marketing. Oblivion would be yeah, right. Dr. So. Oblivion, when you bring the A game, what does the A stand for for you? Um, anal. anal, anachronism, anachronistic. <laughs> Let me, uh, alcoholic. This has been a fascinating <laughs> conversation. Let me thank a couple of <laughs> other uh, contributors here. Cynthia Sarver from Cortland, New York. Yeah, I have actually a, a, a personal connection with Cortland, New York. I did my uh, uh, undergraduate work there. Thank you, Cynthia. Um, graduated from SUNY Cortland. So, uh, thank you, Cynthia. We also have D.L. Norman. <laughs> From Yay. Calgary, Yay. Alberta, Canada. Dr. Darcia. He's bringing it from the MST. Um, we have Todd Conaway, Conway. who apparently uh, Todd apparently hails from Earth. Very nice Todd. Nice. Arizona. Um, and we do have a Jim Groom. 
as well that uh, made a contribution. He's gone. Right? Um, he's he's gone. from Fredericksburg, Virginia. He's gone. Um, yeah, we were sorry to, to have to usher him off the set. This um, is what it's like to be Jim Grubb right now. Those are the applause you get. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I find what I did, the number I did on Jim Groom's head this summer, uh -huh. has really propelled him into a sick cycle. He was pretty freaked out. And I wonder if he'll a ever recover. Cycle. He's yeah. not the same. No. Look at his blog. That's true. I think he banished blogging. Yeah. I think he banished blogging. I think he's banished from his own creative self. It's all pops and whistles I hear in his he's blog. Not he's, he's not himself. He's not himself. No. So come home, Jim Groom. Indeed. We need you. Come home. Big fan of yours. Totally Read all your books. Well, I think it's, uh, right now, I think it's time for a little bit of a sing-along. Um, <laughs> yes. I'm going sing to start the music. I'm not sure if we'll be able to hear this. I, I might have to actually go over and... and uh, you got the music. Do you want to pull this a little closer to it? Okay. Let's see. We can bring up our music. Oh, we need oh, you mean our background? <laughs> our background. <laughs> it's what, what the world... No. no, we're no. Doing oh, we're not doing that. We'll stop that music. Doesn't mean he knows what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> you got the words, Gina? Maybe. I'll my friends. Enjoying this so much <laughs> deeply. Yeah. You don't feel my uncomfortable at all. Oh, so this is I'm like where you fit in. Yeah, we're just gonna you ready? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> on the couch, exactly. bunch of hippies. Ready? One, two, three. What would you say if I sang out of tune? Would you stand up and walk out on me? Lend me your ears and I'll sing you a song And I'll try not to sing out of key Oh, I get by with a little help from my friends Oh, I get high with a little help from my friends Oh, I get dry with a little help from my friends not quite yet. <laughs> we have another verse. Not yet. What do I do when my love is away? Turn this story up to be alone. How do I feel at the end of the day? Turn it sad because you're on your own. Oh, I get my little help from my friends. Oh, I get my little help from my friends. Oh, I'm going to try the little help for my friends. Now? Yes, do you need anybody? Because I just want somebody to love. Could it be anybody? Cause I want somebody to love. Oh, I can't have the little help for my friends. Oh, I can't have the little help for my friends. Oh, I'm going to try the little help for my friends. Awesome. <laughs> Thank you very much, everybody. This has been a wonderful DS106 Radio Telethon. Thank you all for joining us. Gina Garcia, Julia Forsythe, Tom Woodward, Dr. Oblivion, Jim Groom out there somewhere. See you, Jim. Alan Levine. I thank you all. This is A. Wesley Rush coming to, to you from Fredericksburg, Virginia. Thanks for joining us. Join us again tomorrow at DTLT today. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.